OK, well, let's get some more views now uh, from Felicity Houston, who voted to leave, and Ian Parsley, who backed the Remain campaign. Welcome to you both to Evening Extra. Good evening. Uh, Felicity, evening, I'll come to you first. Yep. Obviously, people on the board, I suppose if you had a straw poll, that they are against uh, this whole idea of Brexit. But for people like yourself, it, it, it's now happening. There was a lot of talk about it being stalled and heels being dragged and all the rest of it. But the machinery is now... Definitely in motion, it seems. How do you feel about that? Well, I think I'm very pleased, as are the majority of the people of the country who voted that way. Um, and the sooner the better, because for those people we've just been listening to, one of their problems is uncertainty. So the sooner we get on with it and get on with the negotiations and settle the issues, the less uncertainty there will be for people and they will not be um, preyed upon by those who wish to fill them full of fears of what might happen. Ian, have you accepted that it is now inevitable, the, the, the quitting of the union? Uh, I have to say nothing in the current uh, political world is inevitable, but it's certainly very highly probable and the process has begun. What is not inevitable is a hard border and uh, where perhaps Felicity and I would find some measure of agreement is that one of the things which has to be uh, negotiated very quickly is a set of arrangements to ensure that there is no hard border and indeed no hindering to cross-border activity on the island of Ireland. That will be very difficult, however, because if uh, the UK opts to leave, particularly the customs union, um, then really you have to check, uh, you have to have customs checkpoints somewhere. Now, whether those would have to be located exactly on the border is a slightly different uh, question. And uh, there's some thought being given to whether you could do use technology or whether you could use spot checks elsewhere to, to do this. But that is the very big risk at the moment is that if you have different uh, arrangements for what products are, for product standards and so on in the UK and in the EU and thus in the rest of Ireland, you, you, you're left with a problem that you have to keep checking goods as they cross the border and uh, there's a particular problem in terms of farming produce because there's no arrangement uh, even with Norway which is much closer to the EU than the UK proposes to be um, that allows uh, food and drink to be transported across the border without being checked. This firming of the border if it happens Felicity is a very divisive issue and um, people are worried about what the ramifications could be politically and otherwise. Does it worry you at all? Well I suppose I remember the real hard border you know that we lived with for 30 years. I mean when, when you couldn't get through at all without being checked by the police and the army. So in comparison with that anything is going to be easy and I can remember the customs hanging around with that too but I mean the real issue our real hard border was nothing to do with VAT levels. It was everything to do with the terrorist threat so you know we're never going to go back to that sort of hard border i sincerely hope so therefore it's about learning um and developing a, a, as was said a sensible way to to trade and i mean it goes on all over the world countries abut each other and move around and trade goods and you know they they, they manage it technology is tremendous for doing all that already and i think that's there, there will always be spot checks there are spot checks crossing down to Dublin already if you're transported in public transport. The guards come on and check your um, ID already, you know, so these things are already happening and hopefully it'll be no more than that. Ian, Martina Anderson was very outspoken in the European <laughs> Parliament about uh, what Theresa May could do with her hard border and, um, of course, Sinn Féin are pushing very hard for a border poll now. D does that seduce you in any way, the idea of going into United Ireland to, 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 to save our relationship with the EU? I, I think I think we have to focus on, on where we are, which is uh, the very real prospect that Northern Ireland will be out of the European Union two years from now and the Republic of Ireland will be inside it and that uh, there will have to be some form of checks at the border. So I think we have to focus on what we can do and there are plenty of things we can do to avoid that being the case. Um, clearly, we're also into a different constitutional game now with Scotland thinking about another referendum and so on. And that, that adds to the uncertainty. I'm not particularly blaming or supporting Nicola Sturgeon for that, simply saying that that leads to further uncertainty in a, in a world where there is a lot of uncertainty at the moment. But I think we have to focus, I think it would be better if we focused on uh, finding ways in which we can avoid having a hard border on the island of Ireland and which we can maximise the potential, not just for people to trade, but for people to carry out leisure activities and shopping trips and so on across the border just as they do now. Unfortunately Ian, the Brexit hardliners in London and the southeast maybe are driving this and they're not in a mood for compromise are they 
No, at the moment they're not. Now, I don't rule out that they may have to be at some stage. There's a very real prospect that the UK will be left leaving the EU without a deal in place. Um, and although they're talking a, a good game about that at the moment, in fact, it was the chairman of the Leave campaign himself who said that uh, the EU would have to offer us a good deal and so on, and is now admitting that no deal would be a very serious problem. So there's a lot to play for, and I think there's a very real problem that at the moment it appears to be a particular uh, centre-right interests in the southeast of England that are predominating in the debate, but I think um, we have a role to play and we have a voice to be heard, and we have to make sure that our voice is heard and find allies uh, willing to, to willing to join us in that cause. And I think there are plenty of them. Felicity, we could be hung out to dry in Northern Ireland on the economic front. We're not very high on the list of priorities in London, and they might say, well, uh, too bad, Northern Ireland might have to suffer a bit, but uh, in the bigger picture, that's a sacrifice we're going to have to make. Well, I certainly think it's important for us to remember the relevance of us to the rest of the UK and who pays the bills in Northern Ireland, you know, and it is the rest of the UK. So there is a problem about that. I mean, I think one of the things that will exercise um, both the Irish government's mind and the, the British government is the open border, the porous nature of it. Ireland doesn't want to be the place that migrants arrive uh, trying to get into the UK. You know, they, they, they don't want to have that situation of turning into what Sicily's like and, and other access areas within the EU. So I think they will have a, a point about that, which will, will help focus minds. It's a time of shifting sands, Ian, isn't it? It certainly is, and that's a global issue that we have to face. Um, but certainly I very much hope that all the civic interests can come together in Northern Ireland and make our voice very firmly heard and make us relevant to the debate. Ian Parsley, Felicity Houston, thank you both very much indeed.